Yeah. Um, no, sorry. We're not. We're not restarting. We're just. Uh, we're, we'll. We'll just take the meeting from here. I was just. I was just going to make sure that we had start recording now. Just give me a minute. Just I'll change it to them quickly. Sorry, guys. All right, you're back. <laughs> um, well, where was I? Yeah, sorry. If you can get your report out, because I actually really don't have it. That's perfect. Um, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I don't have anyone else to comment on on the sustainability element. No. <laughs> no, it sounds it sounds like a great idea. I was just seeing if anyone else had any comments on on it, but I think we can move on to the academic support, um, which is the second part of your project now it says that there was no progress i suppose wanted to know why that happened like what what actually happened um and is this something that you're planning on continuing because obviously there will be new students sort of going forward so, um so sorry for that uh, i forgot to um, update but um i met Sarah on like last two, before two weeks ago and so i told my ideas and i met one staff column so uh, I told every ideas of mine and I saw my, you know, what I want to do and all this stuff. So she's really happy and quite excited at the same time. So I came up with the things that I'm going, I'm going to write a letter to Jen soon uh, about what I want to do prior to the studies for undergraduate, like one month academic skills support for the national student. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, it's just, I don't know if it's my reception, yeah. but it's a bit cutting out a little bit. Um, yeah. Oh, still sorry, just that is. Um, okay, so I don't know, did anyone else have questions on that? That was basically the main question, Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so if, yeah, sorry, if you pull the report back up, and it just gone off. Perfect. Um, yeah, so if we move on to the equal access um, of sports at university, um, I think it was raised about how this is going to be implemented in Greenwich, because obviously we are quite limited on space, but we are excited to see what can be offered and where it can be offered. So I don't know if you could give us some more yeah. sort of stuff on that. So just going from my experience, like um, when I was a student, um, I was based at Greenwich. There was no any extra activities like you know some sports so that I can you know get engaged or something like that. I have to go every hill for the sports. So why don't we bring the sports in Greenwich as well? I know we don't have much spaces, but I'm trying to get some spaces like talking to sports coordinator now. Okay. Cool. Sports equipment are on the way, like the table tennis, sports, balls, mm -hmm. crickets, and everything are on the way. So it's almost done. We are like 60% done. There's 40% like waiting for the space now. Okay. So, have you got any idea of where you might have it or, or are you just going to wing it? <laughs> <laughs> no. So for the pools and all this stuff, um, we're going to set it out in the atrium. Okay. And so we'll have one room. So for basically for footballs and all this stuff, we'll just keep the footballs in one room and students can give their ID and they can book it for one hour and they can go to Greenwich Park and then they can play. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, uh, I hope no, nobody comes from Greenwich Park and, you know, complain to us. Um, <laughs> no, you should be fine. No, it's yeah. good to hear. Um, yes, yeah, so if we go down to, where are we now? Um, so the flexible working hours campaign, I'll be honest, I don't know much about this, so I don't know if you could explain exactly what this campaign is, because I'm obviously I'm, a, I'm not an international student, so maybe it's something that I wouldn't know about, but yeah. Basically, so, you know, with the rising cost of living things, so you can see students are just working like 20 hours a day, like, sorry, a week. 
often they're just earning like 800 pounds and 900 pounds a month. But uh, when in terms of looking at their living wage, like they're paying 700 for a room apartment or something like that. And, you know, at the end, they'll just live with like just 50 or something, 40 pound. And you can see the NUS recent survey of that cost of living. So why don't we all like officers from every universities come in front of like in, in support of international student and work of working hours. It will be good if they do like increase for like, you know, more 10 hours for international student. It will be good for them to have a healthy life, not hampering their mental health. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, I know it's, it's hard, but you know, it's a, it's not, it doesn't take money to, you know, just try for it. So it's fine. I'll try my best. So, so, so. Right. If, if, forgive my ignorance. So just to be clear, so um, students that are on a tier two, a tier four visas, they can only work a certain number of hours. Is that correct? Or yeah. is, is, is that because I, I, I know about. Yes, yeah, sorry, do you want to? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as an international student myself, um, mm -hmm. there is that thing that we can work like specific hours per week while being at uni, I thought that was for everyone, not just international students. I thought it was like a limit of 20 hours or something. No, not not my experience. Of that, uh, I mean, what... I, I always knew about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's like a really nice thing to actually try and achieve. But it's also at the same because it will help students with their cost of living. But at the same time, it may be not be able for them to actually do uni well if they work more hours so you these need to also be like kind of managed mm. can i have my point yeah sure yeah. yeah so my point is like it's not compulsory for everyone somebody is from a rich like can't take every student there from rich family some we have with loans and all this stuff so you just you know just we just make a way and if anybody want to do work then he can work. If no, then yeah, he can study. It's his choice. Um, keep, no, okay, keep obviously that makes sense. I just thought it was good to be pointed out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. Like I agree with the idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think this is a really good idea because the cost of living has increased by thirty six percent from last year. So it's really being very difficult for anyone to afford anything over here, especially international students. They are struggling a lot. Uh, so increasing hours, they get the opportunity, at least uh, it's up to them if they want to study for like the uh, rest of the time they can do it. Either they want to work uh, and earn money in their uh, leisure time. Yeah, they can be more productive. It can ease their uh, mental pressure as well as the financial pressure. Yeah. yeah, and I would really uh, want to know, like, what steps are they planning to take? Yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously, it says on here that you had a meeting on the first of September with the other issues. Was that productive, or what? What was the outcome of that? Or did you know if if, if you went? Yeah, so I went to the campaign for cost of living, and so we made um, eight or nine other issues officers. They were like quite happy for this because we like knew that we can work on this as well. But yeah, we can make it as a national campaign. We can go our boundaries and we can work on that. And getting help from press and stuff. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, I think networking on these yeah. issues is really important. Um, but yeah, I think that sounds all good. So if we're happy, we we'll, we'll move on. Conscious of time. Um, so the next one is make sure students get right get the right information from overseas recruiters. Um, I suppose my biggest sort of thing on this would be like how how would you do that? Um, you know, because so, you can't obviously regulate the practices. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I've been talking with the uh, head of finance team. They were like really keen of knowing like how students are coming here. Mm -hmm. So they there's a, like a lot of misconception between student and recruiters so like back in asia like from my country so there's a like a lot of issue with recruiters they many plus students that will have a good life abroad you this that you you know that's kind of giving them a sort of ex expectation but at the end when they come here and they they see the reality and you know 
uh, that doesn't happen. So I saw like many students, they're struggling with their education. They don't know how to study. They come like, you know, making some certificate which are not even legalized. So, so basically I'm, work, I'm working with finance team to just to know like if their papers are really genuine and they really want to study, just get the academics good. Because now you can see there's a lot of international students here, like compared to the previous years. Definitely. So Definitely. before it was too hard, like um, before the student who's, who get the good grades can come to abroad, but now there's no any barriers. Anybody can come here and do this stuff. And I know it's everybody who should get an opportunity, but I don't think this is a good opportunity because they're failing, they're getting misconduct and all this stuff. But at the end, they are just, you know, um, making their life harder. So I want to work on this. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see, yeah, how that gets on. Um, yeah, that is, that's a really important point to sort of deal with managing expectations and making sure people get the right information before coming. Um, and then if we just move to the final point, which is disability rights. Um, so yeah, I'm just interested in how you're consulting disabled students, like who, who are you reaching out to um, and what, what your next steps are really for that? So, um... So my whole life I've been like fascinated by children's, all people's and disabled students because I love others as well, but they're the most people I love because, and I saw some of these disabled students, they were not getting right direction, did this stuff, right? As you, as you might know as well. So um, I'm going, my first step to meet them at this uh, maybe November something like, I don't know, it's a, it's a disabled history month. So I'm gonna meet them and I'm, I'm gonna make some events or, you know, kind of sports for them just to make them the same way as the, you know, not a disability person have. I don't want to keep any stereotype in the university. I want them to have a good university life, just as the normal men. Yeah. So yeah, just going to consult them and, you know, make some events for them. And so, yeah. I see a yeah, really good idea. And I'd be interested to know whether you've, um, involved the start group i don't know if you've heard of them so melanie Fulney, um because obviously that's they, they are the majority of the disabled students so it'd be great to see if you make connections with melanie and see what because i think they're across campus so it'd be good to have the same sort of consistency across but yeah i mean they're really great great projects it's, it's good to see you know so many ideas i think yeah that's yeah quite interested to see how it pan yeah and i think definitely just for my end just to have a bit more understanding of the practicalities of implementing these projects because they're brilliant ideas but just understanding more how they're going to be implemented would be useful for me um i don't know if any of the other panelists wanted to add or ask anything else i think i didn't have to Oh, sorry, cut out a little bit there. I didn't know what you said. Sorry, I was just going to say we didn't quite get to the bottom of that report. Um, can we just yeah. pull up the uh, additional points section? Yeah, because like uh, I was going to mention the oyster card. Uh, uh, yes. How is this gonna like? Um, how does it go? What kind? Sorry, <laughs> what do you exactly plan to like? How are you planning to actually give that to the students? Because like that's have a cost as well. So yeah. So the thing is, uh, there's a university and there's a students at the one point. So what I want is university to charge the oyster payment, like the you know the fees of oyster card, like twenty five pounds before prior to their studies, like in a amount of fees they you know, give to the university. So I don't want anyone to be in a conflict of interest. So I just want like when it will come in a new way, so he will not buy in 25 pounds. He will think like it's, it's like quite, you know, expensive. But why don't like university charge the money and this university just get prepared and just give it to them while get, while they get the identity card? Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a good makes more sense now. Yeah, you just say, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to fight with anyone, but, you know, make a good, just planning unit. <laughs> yeah. 
Any other questions? No, I think, yeah, that would that'd definitely be something that um, I'd be interested to know about if you do implement that. And would that be coming out of Greenwich Student Union? It would be them covering the Oyster card or would it be um, the actual Greenwich University? I'm sorry, just so I'm clear on that. Sorry, can you explain me again? No, so so no, I'm just asking, like wondering about the free oyster card. So, as in, I yeah, get twenty five pounds, or what? Yeah. Sorry, could you explain it maybe again? Maybe I didn't catch what what you were saying. Um, so the oyster card charge for this free oyster card is twenty five pounds, right? Okay. Pounds. He doesn't buy it because it seems like it doesn't give much discount, and it's twenty five pounds uh, per card. So, so okay. many students they think of it, yeah, it's expensive, right? Yeah. Why don't university charge that money on the fee? Like if the fee is fourteen thousand five hundred and they do like twenty five pound extra, yeah, they give yeah. it to the student while giving the identity card, you know, while taking mm -hmm. a PRP or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's better for a student as well. It's quicker, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, well, that's it from me anyway. That was really helpful. Thank you. Lovely. I think that's yeah. I think that's us done. Any other questions for me, guys? Thank you. Oh. Ben, do we need to do anything else or is that? No, so um, just a note for you, Anish, that you'll receive um, notes about uh, what the panel decides uh, in terms of uh, the actions they take over your report um, at some point over the next couple of days. Um, that will be decided at the end of the day today, though. And uh, and yeah, you'll receive any actions that the panel request of you following up from the report. Thank you. Do we join the join the next one now? Is that right, Ben? Uh, we'll join the next one at three. So so we'll have five minutes off. Um, but thank you, Anuj, and thank you to the panel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Take care. Recording. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm chairing the panel. Um, I'm Karima. I don't know if panelists want to do their own introductions. This is the first time we've actually met. <laughs> I think I've seen you before. I've seen you before. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know, just see you in Dreadnought right now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll make sure. Um, but yeah, if the panelists want to do a quick introduction, if they feel comfortable to do one, that'd be great. So. Not heard from a few of them yet. Um. OK, then uh, my name is Kibria. I'm uh, doing my MBA in international business. I'm also the vice president of Chess Society, uh, secretary of MBA Society and treasurer of International Business Society. Nice to meet you. That's all about me. Nice to meet you too, Abdul. Uh, okay, so my name is Ariadne. I am an animation VA third year student and I am also the vice president of the Animation Society. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, my name is Anishka. I'm studying psychology and uh, you might have seen me at jailbreak events. I'm the vice president for jailbreak and for English literature. Oh, okay, nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Wicked. Well, we'll just get straight into it. Um, so, yeah, if we start with the exam information, exam related support. Um, I just, I suppose, my first question is um, in terms of like your role in, in how you're going to find out whether their exams will be in person or online. Like, what, how is that working? Because obviously, that's a uh, University of Greenwich sort of. It's, it's entirely up to them, really. I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if you wanted to go into that a bit more. Yeah, um, so yeah, if you look at the work done, it's through an exam operation meeting. So um, there's a lot of internal university meetings where members of GSU are invited. And since I'm the one who I'm the person who's in charge of assessments, I was invited to that meeting. So that's the meeting where we discussed uh, not just this, but a range of exam related um, matters. And that's where we got the answer. So obviously the answer is exams will be held in person. Um, I hope it says it there. And yeah, the next steps, um, since now we have the answer, the next step is just in terms of communication. 
Okay. Um, so that is in getting that information out to students and yeah, yeah, because it is. I mean, it's a massive transition. I know that I'm in third year, and the past two years have been online, so it's really important, I think, to get that done. But yeah, that's a good, definitely a really good initiative. Um, and I think you don't want to stress people out now about worrying about exams next year, but at the same time, it is about support. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, really good. I don't know if anyone else had comments on that. Uh, yeah, I guess I would just ask what kind of um, in-person exam support would you provide? Like, what, what are your ideas? So in terms of the exam support, we've already got a range of exam support available already through the, through the library. So ideally, it's more about spreading the information about what is available to them. And obviously also be would include evaluating what is available and seeing how it can be improved further. Um, that's obviously if it's needed, obviously. Um, most likely you'll figure this out after the first exam season, which is going to be January time. Once we figure out if students found it successful or uh, useful. And if you see that it has been useful, then we just continue to spread the information about this to students for the next batch of exams should be in May. And if you see that there's a lot of feedback in terms of what can be done to make it better, then we'll be working with the library services to help improve the, um, the exam support that's already available. That's a really, yeah, I suppose it might just be an observation, but I think because um, each faculty and each subject is very different, is it something that you're going to make sort of faculty and subject specific or are you just going to do like a, a rate, just a broad sort of spectrum of everyone? Oh, in terms of the feedback? Um... In terms of, sorry, the, like the exam support that you're going to sort of try and coordinate, is it just going to be sort of specific or is it going to just be broad? Um, so that's already coordinated by the by the university. So what I'm going to do, I'm more focused in terms of um, sharing out, uh, spreading the information out to students. And then in terms of feedback, I think we can we can have it so it can be um, like um, faculty specific feedback in terms of students can mention what faculty they're from and if they found it useful from that specific faculty. But yeah, in terms of the support that's there, it's already from the library service. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I just know there is. And obviously, we've got stress busters as well, so that's another thing, I believe. Um, so that's obviously generic to everyone in terms of stress busters. Definitely. Um, and I think, I don't know if it's so fair. So that is that aimed to be done by November? Is that, is that my reading that right? To share the information, yes. Um, yeah, OK. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, well, that's a really good idea. I don't think there's much else on that um so the next item is university and issue support and well-being provision um so yeah i think this again really important aspect for students um and i think we just had the same sort of conversation with banuj about how it's going to be made available especially especially in greenwich because space wise it's quite difficult to coordinate uh you know sports <laughs> really um so yeah i didn't know if you could yeah, give okay. us some information on that. So I'm working more on in terms of, um, so Anuj, I think he's been focused on Greenwich uh, specifically, yeah. but uh, obviously in terms of Greenwich, um, the facilities that are there isn't really sports related. So his, uh, his approach is, I'm, I'm guessing he told you in terms of providing some sports resources so they can play elsewhere. But my focus is on the, what, we've, what we've got already in terms of Avery Hill pitches, um, what we can implement in Medway and um it more it's more towards um having it freely available to students that's my main focus in terms of the sports because we've got a lot of it a lot of it doesn't get much use because of the, the cost behind it or the whole implication of booking and all of that stuff around it so that's what i'm more focused on that's, um, and then like with well-being do you mean like is that sort of because obviously from from my view it's like medway and Avery, they have sort of access to yoga and stuff for wellbeing. Is that something that would form part of this or is that is that not something that's been considered? I mean, it can be considered. So far, I've 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 put wellbeing more in terms of sports, the sports side. But um, yeah, I mean, that's something that I can take forward and um, put that under this remit. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, really. Some would say yoga is a sport, but that's up to them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone else had comments on that bit. Or if you're happy to move on. Um, it's actually a mention about specific that the gym will be free for specific times for a specific day. Yeah. Don't you think that will be a bit of like 
if all the people go for free that specific day, that specific hours, don't you think it will be like an over population in gyms? So, so another, how are you? So I didn't get the last bit. The, another what? Was it, uh, it, it, it will be like if all of the people go at the same time, it will be like a mess in the gym and it, it's not going to be useful for anyone. So how are you going to manage that? So um, that's obviously managed by the gym, but in terms that's more for students to have a go at the gym, see how it is. And I think it's the if they enjoy it, that's to encourage them to try the gym before they pay for it. And that's what that's aimed towards. And um, that's like a small step. But the, the end goal is to actually have the gym where either it's freely available or we can cut the cost of the gym further but that's like one step towards the right direction that we're we're aiming for and that's something that the gym uh, manager he's just he freely um gave that to us as an opportunity and we just if something that's been given to us as like a free opportunity to students so obviously we're going to take it but that's not what we was that's not what we want so that's why we're working further on that to hopefully either eradicate the gym fees or make the gym where it's your, you get your value for money. So that's the biggest part that we're working on, value for money. So either if you pay, you know, it should be up to scratch or it should be free. That's um, our two routes that we're looking for. But this was just something that's been offered to us and we've just taken it. Yeah, that's no, because it's quite, I mean, it's quite expensive. I don't know how much it is now, but I think when I joined, it was quite a lot. Yeah, it's about 15 per month, I think, something like that. But it's not worth the 15 per month, so that's why it's a lot of work being done. And there's a student group, um, a gym gym related student group who are trying to set up. So I think once they're up and running as well, at least I have the student support in that aspect as well. Because it is quite a waste of, of space, space yeah. really. Any time I've been down there, there's been like one or two people in there. Um, but yeah, it might be an idea that, you know, could have classes in there or, or whatever, something to some discounted classes but yeah it's a really good initiative again I think well-being and, and sort of keeping yourself physically fit are quite um, linked um, but yeah if everyone's happy we'll, we'll move on to um, the universe a university that caters to all faiths and beliefs um, so again yeah another really really good initiative I think um, so I think I think I remember last time Abdul in, in the meeting that you were saying that you were still working on the faith room. Um, yeah. I think that was in Avery. So how is that? Is that has that been completed now, or is uh, it still? So yeah, with that, we're towards like the final stages of planning. Obviously, with the university stuff, is very it's a very long process. There's a lot of people involved. But so where we started off, which which was like a sketch, hand drawn sketch. Now um, we've got um, an approved by architecture. Um, the design, the final designs, and now we've we've come down to you know, the finishing textures and finishing um, you know touches, all of these these smaller smaller details. But the overall plan to what I know is is complete. So now we're just focusing on now getting everything approved and getting getting a start with it again. You know, starting the process. That's. I mean, I'm, I don't think it was in your report. But I think someone said about getting Friday's timetabled out so that Muslim students oh, could go to music. prayer. That's oh, music. is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wondered sort of how you're planning on achieving that because that might be very much a University of Greenwich sort of discretion of how they can do that. I mean, what what are your plans, I suppose, to try and make that practical? Yeah, so um, first thing, I think it says it here, um, in terms of writing, so we're, I'm writing a piece currently um, in terms of the importance of the prayer and the issues that we're facing currently. So the plan is to take that to the vice chancellor and then speak uh, further about the solution. Obviously, we know what the solution is, what we want, what the outcome we want. But first of all, we want to spread the information. So once we have that, then we can speak with the vice chancellor to the timetabling department. And then the 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 goal is to have that implemented by the second term. Obviously, to change the timetable now is practically impossible. So um, to, the aim is to complete the letters, send it forward to the vice chancellor, and then through that, we want to speak to the timetabling department and then have that in place for when you start, everyone comes back in January. That is just a big task to get it across been, everywhere, it's but no, well done. That's really, yeah, I mean, that is, it's very important, definitely. definitely um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else had questions on that or if you want to move on. No. Um, so sustainable and cost-effective travelling. Um, so just for my clarity, did you mean about like with the the campus buses or is this sort of talking generally? 
So um, campus buses, um, I think it's more towards Jabba's treatment, but um, that's something I, I'm willing to support Jabba then. But uh, what I'm more focused on is currently is for the cycle scheme for the academic year 2023 to 24. Okay. Oh, right. Obviously, <laughs> there's other factors too as well. Obviously, that's the one goal which I can see which which would be like a win for this specific agreement, but there's obviously other aspects to it, uh, such as parking and um, you know a lot of these yeah. other things. But the main goal for me that I'm trying to achieve through this would be um, a cycle scheme implemented for the next academic year. That's really so in terms of like bike rental, or am I thinking too far ahead? Like, what, so, so what was that? So in terms of like having like a bike rental scheme, or do you mean just oh. like it, or, or you just mean promoting people to use their bikes to, oh, no, to travel? Oh no, a cycle, a cycle scheme would be like okay. um, to what I, my understanding is like a partnership um, you can have with Halfords, where through the university cycle scheme, students can get um, purchase bicycles at a discount. Um, I think there might be something related to renting cycles as well. But the thing is to help students start cycling as cheap for as cheap as possible yeah. that's pretty mm. much the goal okay cool yeah that sounds really yeah it'd be interesting to see how that develops because you'd have to you know obviously the rising cost of living yeah. although a bike is quite a big purchase it's you know it's going to be <laughs> difficult to sort of keep that going but yeah that's it would be interesting to see how that develops i don't know if anyone else wanted any questions or no okay we'll move on um the men's mental health awareness week I was really, really pleased to see this in there. I think it's so important and it's so underrated. Um, so, yeah, just really happy to see that, that that's in there. I suppose I just wanted to know more about practicality that what it is that what 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 sort of things are you th are thinking of putting on or, you know, is it going to be how is it going to run? So my thing, um, what I hope, what I wish I had as well when I was going through like a difficult times was to have like a network of people to speak to. So my thing is um, through doing this campaign, I want to almost establish not like a society, but like a group of students where they know that they have one another to support them when they're going through hard times. So it's like I want it as a way to unite students who may be going through similar things and knowing that there is people that they can speak to and like uh, making it easier for them to find those people that they can speak to about what they're yeah. going through and you know, the difficult times that they may be going through. Yeah, that sounds really good. It'd be, I mean, it'd be good if there were, if possible, any of the events could be run. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. That events just well, yeah. Um, oh, someone's got a hand up. It's not come up. Oh, yes. Hi, you're right. Donna. Mm -hmm. It's me. Um, I just wanted to know, like, how are you going to connect with the uh, men's awareness with students because uh, is it you're going to create any society or um, how is that really going to work? You know, we can spread to mouth to mouth, but yeah, actually, uh, how, how are they going to connect with uh, any of the team members? Oh, so after you're talking about like, say, after the awareness week, so now we have a group of people, so how are they going to stay connected to one another? Yeah, so, just not about like uh, further also there should be uh, like uh, it's been written that you're gonna work on men's mental health access issues and all that so it's not just about the, it's is it about just a weak awareness or is it uh, it's going to have something else in in future as well like, so my goal is, is just a thing oh. to be provided constantly so 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 as I mentioned so my goal is so obviously first to spread the information and then to to have a group of individuals who care about this issue and of um, possibly like people who are facing this issue. So the, the goal is for me to be the catalyst to start this off where your students know, you know, they have people to that they can rely on and then it'll, it'll fall in the hands of the students where now they've got they've got the people that they need. Um, so now it's going to be their initiative to, you know, stay in contact to one another. Um, if anything, we can obviously help a up a society if they want to create a society in this regard. And the aim is, first of all, to unite everyone. And then once everyone's united, then obviously they'll have one another and now they can work collaboratively together and they can also help spread the message throughout the year, not just in that specific week. But my aim is for the week to be the the thing that gets everyone together. That's my hope. Yeah, that sounds, um, yeah, I'd be really interested to see how that pans out because I do think that they are an area that's missed and they do, you know, men have the highest suicide rates in most yeah, countries. Yeah. So really is important. Um, 
but yeah but it'd be great to know more details as they come like how the week's going to run and, and how it's being promoted um but yeah if, if no one's got any more questions on that we'll move on um so i think yeah we've sort of covered this anyway about mm -hmm. the friday timetable gap so we won't go over it um so um, so you had the meeting with the JSU staff on the 6th you've done that obviously yeah we've done that um, yeah, yeah. So it's just at the stage of, of sending it to the, the VC, is that yes. right? So I've written cool. the paper, so now I'm just getting it proof for it. And then um, also the university has this has this new thing that's been implemented where before you even you can before you send off a, a paper, you can also get kind of sponsored. I think I'm not sure if I've written it here, but uh, so the aim is first of, to to send it to university colleagues who are in easy like um, like easier to access, who can support this? So the once it goes up to the uh, to the vice chancellor, they can see that there's many university staff who are in favour of this. So at least it give, it shows um, the importance of it, and it shows that this is something that needs to be taken more care of. Otherwise, if I just send it straight uh, to the vice chancellor without anyone almost promoting it, you know, it could be I overlooked in a sense. So that's my aim: so to have it sponsored first before I um, yeah. send it off. I'll just go, yeah, I'll give it some more strength to actually getting it through. Um, but yeah, I don't know if anyone else had any thoughts on that. No. Um, OK, so we've got the big priority related update. Um, yeah, there's been a lot about cost of living. Um, I suppose I, I, really, like, I, I get the student surveys, but I suppose I just wanted to know what was being done with that information. Obviously, I've seen the pantry. That's great. Um, really good at like hear it well saw it on the socials as well but is there anything else more that is being done or, or what, yes. what's sort of happening so obviously some of the work that's already been mentioned relates to costs of living but um um also there's an update that i have in terms of the pantry and um, i can quickly give you that so um after speaking with some of the university staff and obviously some students um i'm hoping to have the open the pantry located to the library not relocated but an addition of the open pantry open in the library as well when the library is open 24 7 so at least students who are going to be staying in the library yeah. for the extended period and they have access to it that's just one thing in terms of cost of living and as well as that um we just uh, today as well on my instagram i've put some information um, not cost of living related but student concerns related in a way so i'm just trying to collect as much student feedback as i can and yeah and slowly slowly i'm going to start building up on other factors that I've mentioned. So one that I've, I've mentioned recently is relating to parking, especially in the other campuses, how it can be expensive. That's one thing. And then um, we're all, also we have a meeting coming up in relation to Medway bus. So we're hoping we can speak on that further. And that's that's quite a difficult matter. That's every year it's the same thing. So we're thinking how we can escalate that. So that's what the coming meeting will be mentioning as well. Yeah, that sounds really. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see, you know, action actually being taken and not just words. Um, did anyone else have comments on that or? No, okay. Let's. So we've got additional project updates. Um, so the Islam Awareness Week. Um, I think it's yeah again a really good, really important thing to be doing. I don't really have much comments on it, if I'm honest. I think it's yeah, it's it's a really good incentive. Um, and really important. Um, and the same with the um, International Day of, of Solidarity. Um, I think that's, again, another really good initiative. I uh, don't know if anyone had comments on that either. No. Um, um, both of the projects are really good. And it's, it's, it's spreading more information to people. And it's very promising. Thanks, I Mark. really agree. Yeah, I think yeah, your report was really detailed, so it was just a little finer bit because um, I'm very much I, I'm one of those people who like to know how practically we're going to do this because I have a million ideas and I have to sit down and say how am I actually going to do this. So yeah, I mean great work. I was really really happy to see that. I think that's yeah. Unless anyone's got any other comments, I think yeah we can sort of end there. Perfect. All right. Oh, thank you, Abdul. That was, yeah, right. really, thank really you, helpful. Too. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, again. Yeah. Thanks, Abdul. You'll be receiving outcomes from your report in the next couple of days, uh, and the panel will be deciding this evening what they, what action is going to be taken. Okay, thank you. So, thanks. Bye. 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 All right, then, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.
know, they're okay. perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm Karima, I'm, I'm chair of the panel, uh, third year law student. And I don't know if the other panelists want to do a quick introduction again, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, hi there, my name is Kibria. I'm doing my MBA in international business. I'm the vice president of Chess Society. Uh, Secretary of MBA Society and Treasurer of International Business Society. Yeah, that's all. Every one of the panelists here today. Nice to see you. <clears throat> um, hello, my name is Ariadne. I am an Animation BA third year student and I'm a Vice President of the Animation Society. Nice to see you. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Anishka. I'm studying Psychology and I'm Vice President of Jailbreak and English Literature. Nice to meet you, Aniska. Um, should I introduce myself or? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so hi everyone, this is my first um, scrutiny panel. As you guys know, I'm one of the GSU officer. I'm Fushmi Karki and I will go through the projects that I'm looking forward to work and then few of the projects that have been already started for this year. So yeah. Yeah, if we just jump straight into <clears> it, so got food diversification. I can see a lot of the officers are into their food, which is brilliant. Um, and again, yeah, it's a really great initiative. I think that we need definitely need uh, more food that accommodates other cultures and other religious um, beliefs. Um, I don't think I personally had any questions on it because it, yeah, it sounds quite straightforward and it's quite clear. I don't know if any of the other panelists wanted to ask anything or. If we just move, oh, yep, yeah, gone. Yeah. Um, actually, I mostly wanted to ask about how you will promote the surveys that you prepared. Uh, you will just send to all of us, send them to all of the students via email or? Yeah, so the survey has been drafted, so just needs, and I'm just um, passing around the uh, head of commercial to approve and then to have the promotion side, we will be promoting from GSU. It will be on like we'll be emailing all the students. We'll be promoted to the digital screen. Um, I will be personally uh, be available in the space uh, throughout the uh, time whenever I have free time throughout the day and then like, you know, promote the survey like mostly at the busiest time I see in the cafeterias to all to one. So I'll just jump on there and then ask students how they feel. And then if they have like time to quick fill out the survey, like that way I'll be promoting uh, this survey. I hope answer, I answered your question. It does, thank you. Good, yeah, I look forward to what, what yeah, we and, introduced. Yeah, and uh, I am like thinking the minimum respond I'm planning for this one is like 1,000 so far. At least I have like good sum of students that have like actually done the survey and then we have a clear results like what they want what the basic needs in terms of food and everything so yeah and will it be, to... is it all three campuses that this is going to be yeah yeah it's good to know um yeah so if we move on to career career development um i think it was something similar with one of the other officers really good i think it's really important to have the interview sessions because it's not something that every faculty offers um so i think um so in terms of like the networking event can you just like explain a little bit more like who that's involving like what what that will be um yeah so basically um the general plan was the conduct networking events that differ from the faculty uh, basically this year I'm the lead for the business faculty that's why I started from business faculty as you could see on the inside that's why I thought I would get question why it's in business faculty only not other faculty yes. but just to clear on that bit uh, because I'm the lead for the business faculty so I thought I just have a one year so just being conscious of time and then like managing the stuff what I have in my hand that's why I put the business faculty on that and the networking event it's mostly like um, for the November 24th one, basically, I was planning um, along with the academic uh, team of GSU and also Generator to be involved. Uh, if you guys don't know about Generator, it's like um, the entrepreneurial side of the university. They just lose the enterprise, enterprise challenges and everything. Um, so on this particular networking event, I was planning to like, you know, invite the small independent companies and then have their like 
roundtables and students joining them and asking the questions like mainly focus of placements is students and final year students, also the part time students to find out their career expect. But this uh, event is most likely not to be done in November and have to be pushed further for February because uh, because of the generator been planning already the few events similar to this. So we don't want to repeat it. Yeah, but no, I'm just sense. planning if if not this, then I will be focusing on mock run interview session. I thought this is more important and I have found that no one, even the employability haven't like done this kind of session. So I think it's more practical based for students and will be more helpful. And then I'm planning if I could like, you know, um, lead this one as a success event, then further coming onwards in every officers can pick it and then all GSU can pick it the session and then do it every year. No, that sounds really good. And I suppose um the current phase with me is, is practicalities like how so yeah. with the interviews like who will do the interviews you know who will be looking at cover letters mm -hmm. you know who have, have you got in place is that going to be like an academic sort of input yes and um, so I have been in contact with one of the um, person who does this interview session she uh sees a lecture for professional and uh personal development as well well the conversation is in place so I'm just uh, planning to have a collaboration if not um like or we can I, i'm also planning to do you know bring out if the companies we could invite and then bring the guest kind of professionals uh within the university area and then deliver the actual professionalism in even in interview session as well so those are the aspects i'm looking at the moment to be in place for the students um, yeah no that, that sounds really good and have you had any like, i'm not sure are the business students aware that this is what you're planning to do i just wondered if you've got any feedback from them about how they might feel about you know sort of being involved in this uh it will come in like third a uh, my speak up session I'll be joining like how I'm like contacting students regarding that okay. um and there is another session which is like this 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 and actually uh, the networking event on December is like quite like kind of fixed okay. so this one's like it's gonna take place on December 8th and then it's it's kind of different so on the beginning okay. one I said this will be focused for the small business while this one is for multinational companies right with you okay with you yeah that's so I just really... want to bring the that range so students can be where they actually want because mm. because the scenario was international students and home students quite different mm, definitely so, yeah and I think it'll be quite an in-demand service for students because I know that mm -hmm. Something in my three years that we haven't had much practice interviews, we haven't had much sort yeah. of support in, in preparing in that sense. So yeah, it's a really good initiative. I don't know if anyone else wanted to ask or had had any input on that. No. Um, so yeah, moving on to the speak up sessions, I think it's a really, really good idea. That's like, a really good initiative. Um, but again, I suppose it would be how how you're going to implement that because you know obviously you might end up with a lot of students. Um, sort of coming to you and whether that's sorry my phone's over um so yeah just wondered how how you'd actually implement being able to offer those those sort of face-to-face -face sessions every week and across different campuses that is if as, of the logistics of it been sorted out yet or so i would like to like uh, explain how i did so there's one session i hold uh, even today in the morning so i hold it for like about two hours 11 till um one so I was in a dreadnought atrium, so everything was in place like uh, like was I have a record of students, what they're like uh, with a file of list of questions if they don't have any queries like regarding accommodation, regarding food, mm -hmm. regarding career, what they want to see, like these kinds of agendas I have like uh, combined. And besides that, I'm asking them if there is any comments or issue besides that. I have a list that I can share with you guys as well. It's just I'll show you the demonstration of how the speak up session goes. So I have a list of questions here with a. So there's a question like, has the accommodation been sorted? Whatever mm -hmm. I feel like throughout the week, because a uh, student do come to our office with a problem. So whatever I picked out the main issues from that and then mm -hmm. keep asking those students who uh, show up in a speak up session, like even if they don't have question, I'll go through the question and ask them. 
And so, so here's a question. If there is like there was um, one Nigerian community actually feeling like, you know, that like accommodation problems. So I'm just keeping updated about food, likewise, the employability services, what they want. So these are the comments that yeah. students yeah, has yeah. passed on to me okay. and okay. regarding period poverty. And there's like extra comments. So whatever issue they feel beside these questions. So I'm just okay. typing down and then the, I'm writing down the outcome. And then after that, I will finish up with like first solving the recent comments problem, like mm -hmm. microwave in the drain or building to be fixed. So I mm -hmm. personally went there and checked, but it was working. So comments like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. That can be yeah, fixed yeah. within a second. Like toilets to be cleaned frequently. I checked and then spoke to the cleaners, like, mm -hmm. you know, when they check it, how is the process and everything, like these mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, and this, I just wanted to ask, is it, um... The sessions are they open to all students across yeah. all faculties? See, my only what my only personal worry would be that obviously at that time I know that I'm in a lecture, so would it, I just wondered would there be any be any other offer of a, maybe a different time because eleven till one quite a lot of lectures may be going on. I didn't know whether that might be um, something that you could maybe take I forward. Mean this is like every week not just like once a while it's going to mm -hmm. be every week in different spots beside that i'm mostly present all the time in office because i work from office from nine till five so i always take students questions when they come to my door mm -hmm. so yeah, really this is something that i wanted to like you know be present outside not inside mm -hmm. the office and serving them that's why i put this project mm -hmm. and then obviously i i think it's like people feel more comfortable when I speak to them like face to face one by one rather Definitely. than, you know, just just putting in either in Instagram or just social media or the digital screen. Yeah. That's the main idea behind this project. Oh, no, so, oh, honestly, it's a really good initiative. I think what my point was that is um, there might be areas that you're not reaching because I, I myself have, as a student would have liked mm -hmm. to have been able to participate. But at that time, I, I'm, I'm in the week uh, lecture every single week at that time. So just wondered if maybe there would be another way for you to get that, you know, that sort of across to students that might not be able to attend if, if you're not able to sort of do any other times. Um, yeah. That was um, a really good, really good initiative, really. Yeah, I can provide, you know, I can say like easily, like even after the session, like I, it's always on my Instagram, so feel free to come pass by mm -hmm. any, if you have any issues, even those students with whom I have chatted today, or, like almost I chatted like 15 students and 11 students signed up for it and then they give me like actual feedback and really and uh, and I always tell them like if they have any issues or anything regarding that I always show them like office or where I like work and then they are like happy feel free to like just contact me anytime and I'm present on Instagram every time <laughs> so no, yeah really good. um did anyone else have any comments on that no Right, we'll move on. Um, uh, I'm going to do it again. It's the postgraduate students support. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this I think this is really, really good. It's really important because there isn't much support from what I've seen to to sort of postgraduate students. Um, so yeah, I'll be interested to see what sort of plans you have for that going forward. If you've got any sort of updates, that would be great. If you, if you have got anything in motion. Yeah, so regarding PTO and PTO, I last time, I, like recently this week, uh, I've been in contact with Doctoral Society again, just to update myself if there's anything going on. So basically loads of, um, I would say, PTO students been facing financial problems. We are like self-funded students. So there was a plan to like, you know, draft a paper in support of uh, PTO students for the financial help and extra fund. So I'm working on that project at the moment. Oh, cool. That sounds yeah, well, really interesting to see. Um, does anyone else have comments on that one? Or should we move on? Um, so yeah, cost of living, that is obviously a massive issue. Um, mm -hmm. I think I suppose one thing that I've asked is, you know, with the research that or getting from students, what what are the plans? That, what, what do you plan to do with that research? Are you, you going to try and, you know, what are you going to try and do with that? So as it, I think you guys already know, our demographic and insight team has already put on the survey for this research. So the survey is out now. The uh, 
the results will be out. So I just wanted to check what are the action plans that I can draft after the research in my hand. So that's the actual point mm -hmm. of that meaning, saying research on impact of cost of living and then what we can do and take points from that. And besides that, I, what I found is like current issue is like accommodation. So I'm mm -hmm. currently working on that as well, just trying to find how students are actually affected of because mm -hmm. of that, like loads of international students, mostly international students this uh, this moment, um, are uh, like finding it very hard to find accommodation for them. So I'm just trying to find like which way I can help. Like last week, I tried to, you know, like contact as many um, state agents I could just to like them to bring it to the university and then help with their services, like whatever accommodation they have provided and then explain it to the student. But yeah, it was it was a bit, bit hard because um, at the moment, sadly, all the um, state agents said like, the budget that student it's above the budget that students cannot afford yeah and uh, and there is no place at the moment to rent out as well so it's yeah. it's quite quite a huge issue but still i'm trying to pick on that point so i'm just overseeing like on cost of living as well what is the main issue so accommodation at the moment i felt is a huge issue in terms of affection of like cost of living so i thought like i'll pick up that point so i'm just doing the yeah bits and pieces besides of these as well and yeah. and obviously um another project uh linked with the cost of living is a free sanitary products which should be accessible in every toilet not just yeah, uh, yeah. free in one of the place like in red building or the yeah. hub in a midway or yeah. the dome in a every hill i yeah i really I want to see that. yeah i really want to see like dispenser with the sanitary products in at toilets of the university so students yeah. don't have to rush or run when they're in lecture hall to find one yeah no i agree i think it's you know for some women as well they're quite embarrassed yeah. about having to yeah yeah that's the thing they that. feel very yeah. uncomfortable yeah definitely so yeah that's a really good initiative i'd like to see how that develops hopefully it can <laughs> um mm -hmm. but did anyone else have questions on cost of living stuff no Okay, we'll move on. Um, so the yeah, Safe Zone app, which yeah, not many people do know about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you could just tell me a bit more about what what your plans are with that, I suppose that'd be great. So yeah, it's Safe Zone. I think loads of people don't know about Safe Zone app. So basically, how it happened, I was unaware of this as well. So I went to one of the conference of Safe Zone, uh, Safe Zone, which was held on Manchester. Uh, lastly on um, university and then they told me what's the usefulness of said an app and then it's it's i think like it's for the safety purpose obviously but it's not in place loads of students don't know mm -hmm. like so i think i should start with the like promotional activities like how to download it what are the features of said zone and how to use it uh, like like basically it's for emergency purpose so it has your advice team in there it has your emergency first aid kits and everything in the app so you just need to log in you just need to download the safe zone app and then um it will track your locations take like some of the details like who you are and then your student id some kinds of like these bits and then it will easily track you like when you are in uh, uncertain situations like someone's following you some like whenever you feel you feel unsecure within the university sites then you can usually use the safe zone app that's the purpose and uh we have a meeting regarding health and safety and then that that is my first step throughout the towards the promotion of safe zone app it's for all staff members even um staff members and students around the okay. university yeah, I think, yeah, definitely getting the word out about what it is and what it does is important. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I did like, I did like post a, okay, I did like post a poster on my Instagram and then asked everyone to share as well. When, like literally after the day when I went to the uh, uh, conference, it was really important. And mm. then I have seen the Safe June app uh, promotional stuff with during the welcome week as well in each campuses. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think that's yes, yeah, definitely important. Um, Cabrera, did you have a question or comment? 
Uh, yeah, my question was, uh, did you just promote about this app uh, during the welcome week or, or are you pri trying to promote it further and what are the steps you're going to take? How are you di directly going to communicate with the students and let them know about this complete uh, app, like information about this app? Uh, okay, so safe, uh, safety, like safe June app is like, um, it has a company and then it's contracted with a university. So that company came down to university during the welcome week for the promotion, just letting student inform about that, that app zone that we have in the university. From my side of promotion, what I'm going to do is like, obviously the promotional activities like brochures, like leaflets, and then like in this digital screen, obviously we'll make some videos regarding that. So I think I'll make a video like with the full information, what is Safe Zone app, how does it work, and how students can access it. Access it. So these these are the main things I think uh, it's important for the like first promotion stuff. So this things I'm going to do it. And yeah, besides that, we have a meeting uh, regarding health and safety on site. So we will come up with the solutions how we can, how we're gonna do it, and then how we're gonna actively use the same zone app which we have in the university. Yeah, sounds brilliant. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Nice. Um, does anyone else have questions or comments on that? No, um, um, so yeah, the last thing is the expenditure and annual leave. I don't have any questions on that or comments on that, unless anyone else does. No. All right, well, I think, yeah, that's that's all done. That was really helpful. Thank you, Krishna, for taking your time <laughs> and giving your explanation. Thank you, guys. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Perfect. And uh, Krishmi, we hear about the outcome of uh, the panel uh, in the next couple of days. So what actions they'll require of you. But thank you very much. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Day. You too, guys. Bye. 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 Uh, perfect. So I, um, we'll do just a quick round of introductions. So, um, Javid, obviously, you know me, Kareem, a third year law student, um, and chair in the scrutiny panel. Um, if we just go around, whoever wants to go first, feel free. Hey, uh, hi, Kareem. Hi, Kareem. Hi, my name is Tibria. Um, I'm doing my master's in international business. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> okay, I'm doing my MBA in international business. Uh, I, I like Kibria quite a few times, so that's fine, Kibria. Yeah, <laughs> he knows me like constant. Okay, so my name, hi, first of all, my name is Ariadne and I'm an animation BA third year student and vice president of the Animation Society. Uh, hi, I'm Anushka and I'm studying psychology. I'm vice president of Jailbreak and English Literature. Nice to meet you. Um, Javid, I don't, I know obviously that there were issues with this report, but I don't have your previous one either for some reason. Um, are you able to share it on the screen at all? Yeah, sure, just give me a second. How does my thing keep going off? Perfect. That would do, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. Um. Um, right, perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so if we just jump straight into it, um, I really, yeah, really like the idea of increasing student activism and engagement. Um, obviously, I know you've had some issues. I didn't know if you had any updates for us regarding, regarding if there's anything new on that. Yeah, there's uh, some update actually on this. So today, um, me and some other JC staff, uh, we met an external leadership um, training provider called GRIT. So they normally provide um, different workshops, talk with students and help them to um, thinking. 
Sorry, my reception went. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, no, I can. Sorry, it's my internet, it's not you. <laughs> no, it's all right, no problem. Okay, so um, yeah, there, there's been few updates on um, increasing uh, student empowerment. So um, for the last few weeks, I was planning uh, with <clears throat> with staff support um, to you know develop a leadership program. So we have now reached uh, to the end, end, at the end of the planning stage. So we have decided to do some stuff like um, doing some um, the skill development workshop like listening, speaking, and um, communicating these things. And also we are going to bring some um, notable alumni, alumni who is in politics or in different leadership roles in and um, outside. And, and we have found one of them whose name is Meet Coburn. Maybe you might know him. So he's, right now he's running for a member of parliament election in Stoke Newington, I guess. And apart from this, um, today, um, we talked with um, GRIT. GRIT is an external leadership training provider. So they um, provide different workshops, talk with students, and um, also take students' feedback on different things. And then um, they try to you know, um, help those students to improve their leadership skills. So this is um, another update that we are still talking with them. And um, by hopefully by next week or the week after, we'll be able to finalize whether um, we are taking support from the external as well. But apart from this, um, I don't have any other updates on this yet. Oh, no, that's really good. Sounds really brilliant. Definitely get involved. Um, did anyone else have comments on that? Or sh no, should we move on then? Um, so the flexible tuition instalment, um, I can see that you've done quite a bit of work on it already. So has it been updated on the, have the tech team managed to update that now? or? No, the uh, university hasn't updated me the next stage yet. But, okay. Uh, but yeah, but then... is, this uh, uh, flexible tuition fee instrument option, um, this is um, one place. So um, most of the work has been done already, and they just need to do the final final work, and then uh, afterwards, obviously, communicating with the students. So they will do this part. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, does anyone else have comments on that, or no? Um, so we've got the bus bike scheme, yeah, which we spoke to Abdul about. So he's explained it a bit, a bit, a bit more in depth for me. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a really good initiative in in terms of getting students to avoid paying bus fares and train fares. Um, and then yeah, I know that the bus, the Medway bus, is always an issue, and he's sort of explained to us what what's going to happen there. So I don't really have any questions on that. I don't know if anyone else does. If not, we can. No. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll move on then. Um, I can give you some update on the bus scheme. So um, last oh, perfect. Week, last week um, we did Medway roaming feedback forum where we talked with Medway students and uh, with me, um, student union officers from Kent Students Union and Canterbury Christchurch Student Union. They joined me as well because you know um, Medway campus we shared with two other universities. So we talked with a lots of students and. Um, bus was one of the main um, agenda or um, topic to discuss on. So we, we've got really, really nice feedbacks and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to, um, uh, you know, uh, faster the process, um, you know, with this feedback. So that was the, some of the updates. Well, that sounds good. Are you still looking at a May um, 2023 sort of timeline for that? Um, yeah. Um, because it's an ambitious or it's a big goal, and uh, of course it involves lots of money as well, and um, and you have to think about the practicality as well. Um, just because um, we are demanding this, the university is not going to change it straight away. So that's why I kept you know some additional time. And if it's been implemented earlier, that's good for all of us. But if it's not been implemented, then Definitely. I'll aim to make it by May twenty twenty three. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so what are the others? So we've got, have we got anything else on there? Sorry, I can't see it yet. So we've got language exchange CAF. Um, yeah, that is, a, oh, I've lost it now. It's gone. Oh, um, so I, do, I don't have any update on language exchange CAF. And um, initially we tried to do it this year, but because of welcome and other workload, um, I couldn't really spend time on this last two this yet. Um, 
yeah so there's not much update actually for both of them no that's, that's okay yeah because i think i'm sure we had digital id cards before and i don't know why they stopped i'm not really sure but years ago i'm sure we did unless i've imagined it but yeah they're a really good idea so yeah i remember having them on the first year so yeah on the phone yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good, I mean, good um, thing. Uh, a lot of our students actually they don't live close to the university. When I was doing my undergrad, I was living in Essex, which is like almost one hour 30 minutes traveling time. And, yeah. you know, for example, if you forget one day and you can't go into the library, you yeah. can't go into King William building, you can't go to the other building, so which is really problematic and you can't really go back to your home traveling again two hours or one yeah. hour and if you come back then there's that day is gone already so yeah i think yeah um yeah, th this is this is one of my key priority and um yeah i loved it you when there's any work has been done oh, that's perfect um sorry i'm just reading something um so yeah so the other updates that we were after was um about black history month yeah um if yeah if you could just give us some feedback on, on that. Yeah, sure. So um, we started Black History Month earlier this month and um, we had quite a few um, events and activities. Um, we are doing um, exhibitions in all our campuses and also um, in libraries as well. And also we are doing um, Black Excellence Portrait where we are uh, spotlighting or highlighting notable um, Greenwich alumni or staff who has, you know, um, um, contributed to the society and the community and um, also I have done one Instagram live um, with the University of Greenwich account to um, share what we are doing and um, we also had a pub quiz um, last week and which is quite you know well attended as well um, yeah and uh, we will continue the exhibition um, until the end of this month oh, I think I've seen it I'm sure I have <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's brilliant. I think, yeah, really important to do as well. Um, the other updates, I think, are the NSS task force, which I believe is, Ben, if you correct me if I'm right, I'm not sure, is it the yeah, student? Uh, yeah, I can, I can update you on this. <clears throat> so um, you might know that NSS is National Student Survey, which is targeted for final year students at the end of your study, uh, Office for Students calls every student and try to take feedback. And those feedbacks then um, I think stays with the Office for Students and then release it publicly. And they also share the data with the university and then university um, works on based on that feedback and comment. Um, so um, the courses who are not doing really good, um, university try to provide support and also students union goes there to provide support, especially for um, student boys side and building community side. So this year we already, I have been quite few NSS task force meetings with the other officers as well. And um, I think last week or the week before there was a, a celebration event for um, NSS and PTES. So and PTES is postgraduate thought evaluation survey. Yeah, so where uh, the uh, university take feedback on um, post, um, postgraduate research students feedback as well, then the work on this. So. Um, from last, if we compare it from last year, this year we have more um, communities, I mean, well connected communities now, and also um, improved um, in NS, um, in overall Lo London Students Union. Um, now we are number four Students Union in London, so that's a great improvement as well. And um, so the, the, in the award ceremony, I was there as well. So there's few um, courses who did really well and few services, so we provided award them as well to encourage and in to continue the good practices yeah um do you have Brilliant. any specific questions on nss or any other question um not for me i think the final update we were just looking for was the welcome i didn't know if, did anyone sorry did anyone have any questions on the nss stuff or no um and yeah the final one was just about welcome and obviously how that went <laughs> Yeah, uh, you might know already because you have been involved with welcome as well. So yeah, welcome was amazing. So <laughs> we did three welcome fairs in all our campuses. Um, um, there was lots of attendance in Medway and um, Greenwich Fair, but there is little less attendance in every fair. Um, 
and we overall we did more than 150 um, events and activities and which was most of them was like well engaged and well participated i'll just give one example of one of the global greenwich um, welcome event um, multicultural fashion show maybe some of yeah. you went there so it was uh, really really, really nice and um, the, the dreadnought building was you know fully packed and students was really enjoying celebrating so yeah welcome was great for us um, a bit too much but yeah that's, that's oh, brilliant job. yeah no I, do. I did see it but really fun shame i couldn't have been there studying um does anyone else have any questions or comments or anything no all right thank you javid it really <laughs> yeah really helpful um, all right, thank you, Carmen. Uh, sorry for uh, not providing the um, report earlier. Uh, I think yes. you, you guys are aware I had some problems here. All right, yeah. All right, thank you very much. That's fine. Nice to thank you for that. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.